Dr. Shahid, in your report you stress that while welcoming the positive steps made by the new government of Iran, they currently do not address fully the fundamental human rights concern, including laws and practices that infringe upon various rights, including belief and religion, education and non-discrimination. The Baha'i International Community concurs with this regrettable assessment. To date, there has been no improvement in the situation of Iranian Baha'is. As you indicated, 136 Baha'is are in prison solely on religious grounds. Not one Baha'i youth has been able to complete his or her studies at an Iranian university, and most of them are denied access in the first place. Shops continue to be sealed, work in the public sector is prohibited, cemeteries are desecrated, and incitement to hatred in state-sponsored media is rampant. Even the meager attempt to improve the human rights situation in Iran by drafting a citizenship rights charter, as you stated, fails to address laws and policies that discriminate against religious minorities, including the Baha'i. Dr. Shahid, you referred to several individuals whose detention was identified as arbitrary by the Working Group on Arbitrary Detention. Among those are the seven former Baha'i leaders who were sentenced to 20 years imprisonment in a trial that lacked all requirement to qualify as fair under international law. They have now spent nearly six years behind bars, three to six months of which were in solitary confinement. Have you been able to discuss their situation, which is emblematic of the situation of all the Baha'is in Iran, with Iranian authorities? And what hope do you see for improvement in their situation under Mr. Rouhani? Moreover, as you know, in August last year, Mr. Atollah Rezvani, a prominent Baha'i from Bandar Abbas, was found in his car, fatally shot in the head. Last month, three members of the Moody family were viciously and repeatedly stabbed by a masked intruder in the city of Birjan. Neither of these two crimes have been properly investigated, forcing us to assume that they are actually condoned, if not initiated, by government authorities. These are just two recent examples of a number of such instances of blatant impunity for crimes committed against members of the Baha'i faith. What procedural and substantive changes do you think must be made to combat this injustice? Thank you.